So I came home from vacation and one of my servers is having a problem. This one. So you've seen my backup server in some previous videos. It's got a tape drive, which is running fine by the way. I got my ZFS pool with my four 10 terabyte SAS drives and they're fine too. Problem is that this thing boots off a 16 gig micro SD card and based on the fact that I'm holding a brand new one, yeah, that's what failed. Now I fully expected this to happen. The reason I didn't put my operating system on the 10 terabyte SAS drives is because they're running through a PCIe RAID controller or HBA, I guess it's an HBA mode. So I can't boot from those devices. I can only boot from the internal SATA ports or micro SD. So all of my backup data is still safe on the backup storage ZFS pool. I just need to reinstall Proxmox backup server and reimport that pool. So I got a new 64 gig high endurance card. I'm skeptical of that, but at least I'll have four times as much space to wear out. That's the thought. So if you want to see how to rebuild a failed Proxmox backup server, come along on this adventure. Don't remember what side. Come on. So don't remember what side the SD card slot in. So it looks like it's on the oh. So here we got to look at the inside. So here is my LSI SAS card. This is the 4i 4e. So I have four internal, four external. I got the internal USB, the internal SATA, and the internal micro SD. It just pops right out. Here's what I had before. Some, here's what I had before, some little uh, SanDisk card. That's what I bought now because it was low cost, 64 gig, high endurance. So we'll just pop that guy right in there. We're all done. So now I'm gonna run through the Proxmox backup server installation process on the new SD card just to have an install. Then once I have that install, I'll show you how I set up the existing storage, things like that. So I got Proxmox backup server installed on the SD card. Now we're gonna go through everything I do to reconfigure it. And the first step in that is getting my zpool back online. So here are on zpool status, so there's no pools available. They do exist though, it just didn't get exported cleanly, so I need to import it. I think it's called backup, so let's try to import that and we're gonna force it. So now if we zpool status again, so the backup pool is online. We have a RAID Z1 and we have our mirror. So I ZFS list, you can see I've got my two data sets here. So I got mount data store backup and the logs. So previously I moved my logs directory from the Proxmox backup server from uh, var log to the ZFS pool. And that was to reduce wear writing on the micro SD card. So we'll have to do that again. So now that this guy's here, we gotta add this to our Proxmox backup config. So here are the config files for Proxmox backup and there's actually no data store.config yet because I don't have any data stores. So I'm gonna create one. There, so I just have data store, the name of the data store and the path to it. So we'll save that. So now if I just refresh in the GUI, you can see my backup data store is here. So if I look at the contents, it'll take a little bit, but there we go. So here's all my backups. So now my backups are accessible again. So now at least I got my backups back. Now I can review the backups, do anything I want with them. But I really want to get the whole server functioning as it was before. So that means any of the tweaks I made, the auto shutdown script, um, moving the logs onto the ZFS pool, all that stuff I have to do again. But I actually did a backup of the backup server onto the backup pool. So now I can restore that. So if we go over here to host big store, we take a look at this backup. So this was, I don't know, almost two months ago now. So I scrolled down to Proxmox backup. See, so there were quite a few files in this Proxmox backup directory on my previous time. So these were the keys I was using before. So the TLS certificates. Um, there's some other configurations. So there's the tape config that I'd like to bring back, all of that. So since I'm running on Proxmox Backup Server, I have access to the Proxmox Backup Client. So I could mount that backup and then copy things out of it. 
So I think I'm going to do that. So because I had a backup of my backup server, all I had to do was add that data store so that I could get access to the backup data, mount the backup, and then rsync the files from the backup onto the running system, then restart the Proxmox backup services. So this seems pretty simple, but it's very important that you use rsync instead of copy so that file permissions are maintained. So I did this with rsync for Proxmox backup server itself, also for Nebula that I run, and all of the auto shutdown and custom systemd units I've written. I went with rsync, moved them all over, we're all good. If you'd like to run the same backup script that I run, I also have that in the blog post down below, so you can backup your Proxmox backup server as well to itself. So if you didn't have a backup like me, what are our options? What do we lose? So the ZFS pool that I mounted, the backup data set, that really contains all of the backup data in its entirety. So all of the backups, all of their indexes, all of the data, all of that is there and all of that is safe. We did lose a couple of things though that are stored on the Etsy Proxmox backup folder of the root file system. So first of all, we have the TLS certificates. These are used by the web UI and the Proxmox backup proxy. Second, we have the user account info. So this is all the usernames, all the passwords, and if they have two-factor, their two-factor information. And in my case, I also had tape configured. So the tape library and the tape configuration was also lost. But again, this is the configuration of the tape drives and things like that, not the actual data. So if I had the tape, I could create a new drive in the system and restore the tape backup because the entirety of the data is on the tape. I just lost the configuration of the tape drive. So what do each of these things mean? So if you lose the TLS certificate and you're using self-signed certs, that means you're going to have to copy the fingerprint from Proxmox backup server onto all of your clients. So you'll have to go into Etsy PVE on Proxmox, edit that storage, update the fingerprint. If you're doing it manually using one of my scripts, there's an environment variable. You just have to update that on all your systems. It's a bit of a pain, but it's not the end of the world. Another option here is if you use Let's Encrypt for your certificates, then you'll just have to renew the certificate. And once it's renewed, it's publicly trusted. You don't have to use the fingerprint anymore. User accounts are a bit similar, but passwords are not stored with much protection. I mean, they're only allowed access by the root user. But it's possible if you have a username and password from Proxmox, for example, from P Proxmox VE, or if you have like a, um, what's it called? If you have an API key that you're using, you can take that from a client that works and put it back in the config file. So if you create a new user with the right name and a new password, you then go into the password file, edit that, and put the old password back in. And so that's pretty much it. Um, Proxmox Backup Server is a pretty great system. I really like it. My system's back up and running. So now I can go back to doing dangerous things in my home lab without worrying about uh, data loss. So I've got some things coming up that I really needed this backup server to be working correctly for. I'm gonna replace Home Assistant. I'm going to probably move my NAS. Got some new hard drives coming in. So if you wanna see that, stay tuned. I have a Kofi link down below if you're interested in tipping me, if you found this useful. I have a Discord server too if you wanna chat with me. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next adventure.